Welcome and thank you for joining. So this is going through the solutions for ThinkPython version three, chapter four. So the first exercise is to write a function called a rectangle that draws a rectangle with given side lengths. For example, here's a rectangle that's 80 units wide and 40 units tall. So we're gonna use the def keyword to define the function rectangle. We're gonna define the parameters L and W for length and width. I'm gonna create a variable. So this was my approach. Uh, I wanted to use a for loop. So I'm gonna create a variable called sides and I'm gonna store the length and the width as a list. So the cool thing about this is if you have any list, so we'll just say L equals zero, and one, and then I take that list times two, all it does is it compounds it, right? So I can kind of oscillate back and forth. Uh, you know, I can make this go to four or whatever. I can even call this directly on the list. So let's say I don't even set a variable and I just multiply this by four. You can see that it just repeats those inputs and compounds them into one list. So I'm gonna take advantage of that property of Python. And I'm gonna create a variable called sides and that is gonna be the length and the width times two. So I'm gonna declare make turtle for i in sides. Now, again, this isn't gonna be like the range where it just counts through and i is an integer, right? Again, I'll kind of break this out if I do if I do sides equals uh, 80 and 40 times two, and I call sides, we can see that it just goes to 80, 40, 80, 40. And now if I do four i in sides, print i, see how it just prints 80, 40, 80, 40. So now when I call i in my for loop here, it's gonna go forward by i, so it'll be 80, forward by 40, forward by 80, forward by 40, each time it runs through this. And then of course I want my left turn in there to make my rectangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this to define that. And I don't need to call make turtle here. I could either take this out or take it here. I'll, I'll just take it out here since the notebook's general convention seems to be to just call make turtle. So I'm gonna call make turtle, I'm gonna call rectangle, I'm gonna pass 80 and 40 and I'll run this. And it makes my triangle for me. All right, the next exercise is to write a function called rhombus that draws a rhombus with a given side length and a given interior angle. For example, here's a rhombus with side 50 and an interior angle of 60 degrees. So we're gonna define rhombus. We're gonna use a length and an angle for the parameters. We're gonna do four i in range two. Now in this case, i will be an integer. It's gonna start with zero and it's gonna to go to one and then it's gonna stop but not include two. So forward by the length, left by the angle, forward by the length, and then left by the inverse angle. That's why we're using 180 degrees minus angle. So go ahead and define that. We'll call make turtle, we'll call rhombus with a side of 50 degrees and an angle of 60 degrees. And we can see that that draws our rhombus. Now, squares and rhombi are both parallelograms and they are quadrilaterals. So this next exercise is asking for a more general function called parallelogram that draws a quadrilateral with parallel sides, then rewrite rectangle and rhombus to use parallelogram. So kind of sticking with that same theme of generalization and encapsulation, right? We wanna make a more generalized program and we wanna encapsulate that into other programs that we've written prior to simplify it. So this was my solution. I'm gonna define parallel, parallelogram. It's gonna take a length, a width, and an angle. Again, I can declare make turtle here. I'll just leave this in here since I deleted it down here. So for i in range two, I'm gonna go forward a length, I'm gonna go left the angle, I'm gonna go forward the width, and then left 180 minus the angle. So now I'm 
giving an extra parameter to define width, whereas a rhombus is a parallelogram that has a different, you know, non 90 degree angles, but the sides are all the same length. So the parallelogram can have any length and width and angle. Uh, so we are going to redefine square. Square just takes length and we'll call parallelogram and we're gonna pass length to that. And then of course the angle for parallelogram in the case, this in the ca special case of a square. So you can think of a square as a special case of a parallelogram where the lengths are equal and the angles are 90 degrees. So first I'll run parallelogram just to show, ah, hold on here, I got a name error. I just need to run this real quick. Try that again, there we go. So I can make a parallelogram of whatever side I want, side length, width, and then angle. And in this case, the square is gonna be a parallelogram that has length for the length, length for the width, and 90 degrees for the angle. And I can go ahead and run, oh, square was already defined, so let me redefine it with this new definition. And we can see that it makes a square. And I can redefine rhombus by taking a length and a length and an angle. So the difference between rhombus and square is that instead of the angle being strictly 90 degrees, it can be whatever we want, but the lengths are still the same distance. So length and width are just one, one value. So I've run rhombus, and now I can run that again, and we can see that, uh, you know, that will work for us. Okay, and then we can test it with these. The next exercise is to write an appropriately general set of functions that can draw shapes like this. So we want to write a function called triangle that draws one triangle segment and then a function called draw pi that uses triangle. So for this, I had to go look up a little bit of math and we have to use sine and pi. So I'm going to import the math module. I'm going to define triangle to take length and an angle. The base angle is going to be defined by 180 minus the angle divided by 2. The base length is going to be the sine of the angle divided by 2 pi divided by 180 times. So we're going to take the result of this sine. We're going to multiply that by the length and multiply that by 2. And we're going to go forward by the length, we're going to go left by 180 minus the base angle, forward by the base length, and left by 180 minus the base angle, and then forward by the length. So I'll go ahead and define that. And then we can actually, we can run this. I'm just using the, the hotkey B. So if you're inside, if your cursor's inside of a cell, you have to hit escape first and then B, and that will create a cell below. You can also use A, and that will create a cell above, but you have to be outside of the cell. So you have to be in the command mode. Um, so I'm just gonna call triangle, and I'm gonna give it a length of 40, and ooh, I guess an angle of, I don't know, let's say 45. And we can see that we we have that. Um, and of course, I didn't, I didn't call make turtle, and that's why it kind of drew over itself. So I'll call that to fix that. All right, and then the next exercise is to create a function called draw pi. So this will take segments, and this will just be a number of how many segments you want, and then a length. So for i in range, the length or the range of segments. So if I put four here or eight here, it'll iterate through that as many times. I'm going to call triangle. I'm going to pass the length to triangle, and then I'm gonna do 360 degrees divided by the number of segments, and then I'm gonna turn left 180 degrees. So I'll go ahead and define that, and then I'll go ahead and call draw pi on eight with an or with eight segments and a length of 40. And I can make this four segments. I could make this three segments. I'm curious what it'll do, yeah, there we go kind of makes like a chevron, but I can put whatever number and it automatically figures it out for me. Um, so that's pretty cool. Okay, um, this will just test my functions. So I kind of run that. And it can make five sides, six sides, seven sides, etc. 
Okay, uh, this final exercise is to write an appropriately general set of functions that can draw flowers. We're gonna use arc to write a function called petal that draws one flower petal, and then we'll use the same kind of logic we used up here to draw a flower. So I've defined petal, it takes a length and an angle. For i in range two, I'm gonna call arc that takes a length and an angle, and then I'm gonna turn left 180 degrees and minus that angle. And we can call pedal. And I'll just give it a length of 40 and an angle of, I don't know, say 45. Go ahead and run that. Oop, go to call make turtle. There we go. That is very slow. So this is where we're going to use the delay function. I'm going to kill this. I'm going to get an error on this, and it's going to go a little faster. So it just makes one petal for me. And now I'm going to define flower. It takes the number of petals, the length, and the angle. For i in range, the number of petals. Petal takes length and angle, just like before. And we're going to turn left 360 degrees divided by the number of petals. So I'll go ahead and define that and run this. And we can see we can make an eight petal flower that has a length of 30 and an angle of 45. We could do an angle of 60 and run that. Makes it a little wider out. We could do an angle of 180 and see what that does. So it kind of makes this like spirograph thing which is pretty cool. All right, uh, and we can use this to test. So I'm gonna leave the Ask a Virtual Assistant stuff to you guys. Um, there are plenty out there. There's ChatGPT, there are local ones. I think I have, let me see if I have Olama. Um, Dolphin Mixtrol is a pretty good one, although I don't. I think I had to delete it to move, make some space because it's like 22 gigs or something like that. Oh, now I have it on. Okay, so yeah, I'll give I'll give this a shot. This is uh, this is live code for me. So, what this is saying is there are several modules like JupyterTurtle and Python, and the one we use in this chapter has been customized for this book. So if you ask a virtual assistant for help, it won't know which model to use. But if you give it a few examples to work with, it can probably figure it out. For example, try this prompt and see if it can write a function that draws a spiral. So I'm going to copy this. That's right, copying is a little weird in Google Colab. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna use triple quotes. Actually, I think it has to be specifically triple quotes. And then I'm gonna paste that in and then run that. And we'll just see what it does. Now, the cool thing about Olama is this is all completely running locally on my machine. In fact, you might start hearing my laptop fans uh, increase and try to take off. This might take a little while, so I may end up pausing this recording to uh, just save some time in the video. But the the cool thing about this is you can download Olama. I'm running Ubuntu 22.04, I think. So this is a version of Linux. It's it's free, it's open source, mostly. And uh, Olama is also free and open source. And you can run and access all kinds of models. And uh, you can almost think of Olama as a is a program that runs versions of models and it also acts as a repository for those models. So people will train different models. Dolphin Mixtral is a, um, is a model that's trained specifically to help with code and technical tasks. Um, and uh, there we go. So it's starting to spit out some something. But, you know, these technologies are very young and you don't always want to just trust it without verifying. So to draw a spiral using turtle graphics, we can modify the circle function to iterate over a range of radii instead of drawing a single circle. So from JupyterTurtle import make turtle forward left import math define a polygon. It's going to be n in the length. 
So right now it's basically just copying the input that we gave it, which is interesting. <clears throat> but it, it does have some awareness that it needs to do more than that, right? It's saying we can modify the circle function to iterate over a range of radii instead of drawing a single circle. And remember, our, our purpose here is we want to create a function that draws a spiral. So let's see. Yep, it's starting to write that function spiral. Radius start, radius end, number of circles, circumference 2 times pi, math.pi. The delta radius. So radius equals end minus radius start. Number of circles. Uh, and there's some more here. Keep in mind that the result might use features we have not yet seen, and it might have errors. Copy the code from the virtual assistant and see if it can get if you can get it working. If you didn't get what you wanted, try modifying the prompt. So we'll we'll just I'll give this one shot. Um, if it doesn't work, you know, of course I'll test it. If it doesn't work, I'll leave it up to you guys to try this out with maybe ChatGPT or some other some other virtual assistant, and maybe we can compare results. But let me let me start evaluating this. Okay, so circumference equals two pi. The delta radius is the radius n minus the radius start, the number divided by the number of circles. For i in range number of circles, n equals 30, length equals circumference times the radius start plus delta radius times i. So i is going to be uh, an integer here. It's going to iterate through the number of circles from 0 to however many we have, minus 1, divided by n. And where is n defined? Okay, that might be a problem because it's calling n, but it's not declaring it. So we have polygon defined, and that matches up. Angle equals 360 divided by n, 4i in range n, forward length, left angle. So I'm just going to copy circle. Actually, I think I might need to copy. Actually, yeah, I'm going to copy polygon. So I'm going to grab this. And I guess I may as well grab all of it. I'll paste this in here. And let's just see what happens. It's probably going to get an error on line 16 here. That would be my guess. Because I do not see. Oh, no, n is defined as 30 here. OK, so yeah, this should run. And it's making a spiral. That's pretty impressive. And again, I'm not, you know, this is completely local and uh, just being generated on the fly by my computer. So um, this is very helpful. So I, I've recently been getting a little more involved with generative AI, but specifically in um, the defense industry where cyber and data privacy are of utmost concern and importance. So they can't just use something like ChatGPT because they might have to reveal um, sensitive information to OpenAI that OpenAI doesn't have the proper authority to view. So um, this is also useful if you just generally have privacy concerns about using, you know, any any other third party that you have to trust with your data so um so that's why i have this running on on this computer and uh you know kind of experiment with it and uh you know get it set up and everything like that and i kind of like it because i am not a big fan of you know going and making you know so many accounts and so many different passwords and it's it's quite an effort to make sure that they're all you know um, secure and use different passwords and keep passwords updated. So I really just try to minimize the number of uh, online accounts that I have for stuff for cybersecurity reasons. Um, so having something local like this that I can just spin up and run, I don't have to worry about the service ever being down or blocked or changed. You know, if they make an update and it change, changes my results, it's very convenient. Uh, and I, I'd encourage you guys to look into how to, how to set something like this up. It's very easy, especially if you're running on Linux. So yeah, you can see the power of using a virtual assistant, even a local one on a fairly, you know, consumer grade laptop like I have. I just have a uh, you know, a, a little older Dell that's running an i5, um, and uh, and this works just fine. So uh, it's very interesting. So yeah, hit me up in Discord if you have any questions, and hopefully you found this interesting and informative. Thanks.